Here's the final drive assembly off of the tractor I'm restoring. This is the left hand side. This is not off the parts tractor. It's pretty crusty. Um, it's been undercover ever since we parked it, at least mostly. But I've already banged a bunch of junk out here. Here's brake drum looks pretty thin. It's gonna be fun to get off. These brakes have never worked actually. Not since we've had it in the eighties. Something interesting here on the main final drive gear, the large gear, there is a pan that you fill with gear lube. There's a fill plug right here. I don't think we ever knew that existed. So this has never been changed or checked since we've had the tracker. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to scrape some of this crud off, and then we'll start tearing it apart. All right, next step is to remove the brake band in here. So there are a couple clips, one on this pin and one on this pin over here. that need to be removed first. Then we would take a punch and drive the pins through the housing out the other side through these two holes. And where they would merge is over here on this side. So we'll see how it goes. First I'll try to tap the pins back a little bit. Might help in removing those clips. If they even move. They look like that's one. This one here is fighting me a little bit, so try to tap it out. Should have been soaking these in penetrating oil. Well, at least hit it was WD-40 now. Might help once it starts to move. Yeah, it's moving. I'd moved a little bit. I'd have to rock it back and forth. Put the camera on the other side.
too bad. Pretty crusty and pitted. There's a groove where the snap ring goes. Well, I guess it's not really a snap ring. A clip. All right. I'm going to try to pull this brake band out with the hoist. There's a hinge on the bottom of it. I'm trying to get that hinge past the casting here. It's a little easier if it's a, this is actually still in the tractor. There we go. Yeah, this is pretty much toast. This is the hinge it normally flexes, but obviously didn't flex there this time. All right, next up is the brake drum. Pretty crusty. There's a set screw there that looks pretty horrible, actually. You gotta get loose, it's got a jam nut on it. There's an access hole underneath to get to it. Okay. Here's my puller setup for pulling the brake drums. We got some half inch all thread and a puller that normally came with shorter bolts but we got to reach way down in this housing these nuts and washers that are welded together i have to sneak them behind that brake drum and then run the all thread through it so i'll get that set up and we'll come back here it is all set up <clears throat> I have a feeling that this is going to require heat, but I'll give it a quick try anyway. All right, just like before, I'm going to wrap this thing in a towel, just in case stuff decides to come apart. Doesn't make it completely safe, but it gets a little safer. I mean, all threads not ideal for this anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to put much more of that than that on it without heat. After heating it up with a torch, using that puller, I did get the brake drum off. Had to get it pretty hot. Um, 
torch I was dealing with was pretty small, so it made it a little bit difficult, but it worked. This drum looks like it has seen better days. It's worn pretty thin in a lot of areas. So I'm hoping the two I have off part tractor is in decent shape. If not, I'll need to buy new ones or possibly make new ones on the lathe. It just depends. The other one I took apart the other day, it was not as nice to me. Um, it shattered while removing it. And most of that was my fault, the way I was trying to remove it and then put it in a press, and that didn't work out very well. I ended up having to take a torch and notch it and then slide it off, which itself was pretty tough to do, um, really hard to get to. And the torch I had was very small and not really hot enough for this. So I was able to get it off. It did slightly damage the shaft, not horribly. It's still usable if I need to, but I don't think I need to use it. All right, next up, we're going to pull the pan off of the bottom of the final drive and see what we got there. All right. pan here in case I have any oil coming out. Doesn't look like much. Oh, there we go. That's not horrible. Doesn't look like there's any water in it. Nothing real metallic, but it's been sitting so long that would be probably stuck in some sludge in the bottom of this pan. Well, no real sludge in there. I mean, there's a thin coat, but nothing horrible. Here itself looks like it's in pretty good shape. Teeth are smooth. No burrs. Wear pattern doesn't look bad. Show you all a closer view of those when I get the gear out. So next step, we are going to remove the axle shaft, slide the gear out. I'll need to take this cap off, and behind that cap there is a screw and a washer. And then there is a nut inside of here that I'm going to try to see if I could tap loose with a chisel. It looks like that'll work. Got a lock washer on there, and I see a little bit of space. I'll try to move the camera over. We can get a better view of that while I'm removing it. Okay. There's a nut right here. So there's the nut I got to remove. There's a lock washer. And then the gear itself. So let's see if I can get this to spin easily. The other one I took apart came loose real easy like this. I am going to make a wrench for this before I put it all back together. I don't want to put it together like this. Oh, yeah, it was great. I 
matter of fact, <clears throat> moves good enough, I may be able to get it with some channel locks. And just spin the gear. Okay, that's good, definitely loose now. All right, so I'm going to remove this cap next. Probably should have done that before I removed that nut, but it doesn't matter at this point. Okay, I should be able to lift this up with a chisel. Get it to break loose anyway. Maybe follow up with a with some pliers. Need to grab a chisel a little just a little more blunt. goes over the back. Here we'll have a nut, lock washer, a flat washer, and then there is a tapered roller bearing and a race. So we will remove the nut and washers and try to press the shaft out the end. Then the tapered roller bearing will basically fall out of this end. We'll slide the shaft out and grab the gear. Start over. Okay. We're gonna remove this nut. We're gonna remove this bolt. So we're gonna remove this bolt and to keep this gear from spinning. We'll put a punch or anything essentially through that hole. Now it won't move. There we go. See if we can if the gear moves at all tapping it. It does. Moved about a eighth of an inch, quarter inch, so it's not press fit too tight. Let's see if we can get this shaft to slide out of the bearing. So I'm gonna use this rod and hit it with a hammer and try to push the shaft through. There we go. So in a minute that bearing will come off. So our resistance at this point is the seal coming out the other side. I think our nut's fine here. I cleared it. Yeah. Let's take a look at the seal on the other side. It's moved out some, so maybe we can get to it with a screwdriver and pry it out of the way now. I'm gonna try to drive it through a little more. Okay, we're 
getting somewhere. The bearing came off the backside. This bearing's in really good shape. Brace looks good too. The right hand side of this tractor, it was torn up pretty bad. It was pretty much unusable. And our seal popped out. Good deal. go. That one has seen better days. Okay, so there should officially be nothing holding this axle shaft in. Other than this nut, you spin this nut the rest of the way off. out. All right. Okay, so this is the axle for the tractor. A large gear runs on this part of the shaft. And the hub is here. This outer bearing. Uh, the bearing doesn't look bad, but the race has some spots in it. Lines look good. Threads look good on both both ends. Okay, let's check out this big gear. Gasket material. All right, so the splines look good inside of here. Let's see if we can. Actually, view some of these teeth. So they're smooth. It's got a little wear pattern that you can see, but not feel. Actually, looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we're definitely going to go with that one. All right, I'll dig down in here. Lock washer that holds the gear to the shaft. There's the nut that holds the gear to the shaft. I'm going to move the camera so y'all can look down in here. All right, looking inside this housing. Looks pretty clean. I could see. The gear on the end of that shaft that comes out of the differential. Looks like it's in good shape. Yeah, from here I can't see anything bad. Bearings feel nice. There's no end play. The other one had a ton of end play and the bearings roared when I turned it like that. Okay, so next step is to get that shaft out. To remove this upper shaft on the final drive, we take this cover off. Underneath this cover, there's a tapered roller bearing. And we pull this cover, which will contain the race for that bearing. We'll remove this, and the shaft should come out pretty easily by hand. tapered roller bearing that supports this end of that upper shaft on the final drive it actually I think looks great race looks pretty good too so on this cover there are shims that I'll need to keep track of there are metal shims with a sheet of paper between each one 
probably some more on here. Yeah, there's a couple more. So these shims are how we adjust the preload on this bearing. So depending on how many shims we add, it'll put the two races closer together or further apart. This particular one, it seemed to have perfect in play. So, or perfect preload, I should say. There is no, no in play on it. Okay, now in theory, the shaft should slide straight out. There is a taper roller bearing and a seal on the other side. The seal should stay in place in the housing. And the bearing itself should come out attached to the shaft. There we go. Gear looks decent. Outer bearing's good. The inner bearing looks great too. The ceiling surface. Can't even see it. There's so much crust built up. But other than that, it looks great. Splines on this end that go into the differential look fine. There's a ceiling surface here on the differential side. It's pretty good groove there, but it can be cleaned up also. All right, here's all our bits and pieces. Take one last look to see what we got. <clears throat> So the brake drum, pretty much toast. I'm hoping the ones on the parts tractor are in better shape. But if not, these are available new, or I could make one if I need to. They're worn pretty thin. Likewise, the brake band is just as bad. I can't make it round again, but normally this would wrap around this drum. And that's how it would sit. But they're pretty much toast. The brakes on this has n have never worked since we've had it. This pan is basically the same shape the other one was. As far as rust and stuff, they're not too bad. Um, the other one has got a pretty large bend here where something got kicked up and wedged between the housing and the rim. Then while I was beating off that hub, I missed and hit this right here. So it's a little ding there. So what else we got? Brake pins and clips. We need new clips. Obviously, these are not going to be fit tight anymore. Um, these pins are probably usable if I need to I'll clean them up. I'm not sure. New brake bands might come with pins. I don't know. I'll research that and see. The upper shaft on the final drive. This side goes into the transmission as a differential. You have an inner seal here. You have an outer seal and the final drive on this side, obviously. This brake drum sat right there. It's the only clean spot on it. So the bearings themselves look pretty good shape here. The teeth on the gears seem to be in pretty good shape also. This is the axle shaft. This large gear sits on this side. Then we have a bearing on the outside and this cap. And then the hubs here with the tire and wheel obviously. The seal surface here where this outer seal road. It's really dirty, but it doesn't look torn up or anything, so it's probably fine. Splines are in good shape on both sides. This bearing is actually in really good shape, unlike the other one I took apart for the right side. This entire assembly is pretty decent shape, just needs to be cleaned up.
This gear is fine, as well as the other side was. Um, this would normally, I've got a washer on it now, so it won't fit, but this would normally go through. This gear mates with it here. Nut and washer that hold this gear in place. Cap to cover the end of the axle shaft. This cap has the race for the outer bearing for the upper shaft. And it would normally hold this shaft in place, right? The race looks like it's in great shape. This whole thing's in good shape. It's probably some of the best paint on the tractor right there. And we've got these shims for adjusting the preload of the bearings. All right, so let's take a look at the housing. If we look in this end, it's pretty crusty there. That is the inner seal for the upper, upper final drive shaft. The outer seal actually mounts on the transmission on this side. Normally your brake drum and band would sit there. So this is the other side of that seal. And we also see the race for the bearing. It's hard to see it. My lighting's not right here, but the bearing race looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's a lot of crud on the bottom, but that's not it's not damage on the race. And on our axle, there are some little pits and marks here that you could feel if you touch them. So that race is toast and possibly the bearing. On that other side though, this race is in great shape all the way around. 